Coming up on KRCG 13 Live at 10, a deadly head-on crash in Callaway County leaves one man dead and two others seriously injured. We'll tell you how troopers say it happened. And a big weekend for graduations in mid-Missouri. We'll tell you what colleges are sending students on to their next chapters. It's very important for me as a person and especially as a mom to show people that you need to finish what you start. And a local mom graduates with her master's, a milestone with much more meaning than a degree. We'll explain why. And your Sunday will start out with a couple of showers. I'm timing those out for you coming up. KRCG 13 live at 10 starts right now. Live from across mid-Missouri, this is KRCG 13 live at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news. A 23-year-old New Bloomfield man is dead tonight after a fiery collision this afternoon. Good evening, I'm Tommy Sladak. Troopers say shortly before 1 p.m., Ryan W. Kirk was traveling westbound in a 1999 Chevrolet Silverado on Route Y. It's right near County Road 365 when he struck head-on with a 2012 Dodge Ram pickup truck. Kirk's vehicle came to rest partially off the roadway while the truck stopped in the westbound lane blocking traffic. And as you can see, a little bit in this picture here, both cars have become fully engulfed in flames. That's the grass right off the roadway there at 365, right by the Oak Chapel Missionary Church. The driver of the, tw of the truck, 28-year-old Ross Arnson and a 7-year-old boy, both of New Bloomfield, were taken by ambulance to the University Hospital in serious condition. Troopers shut down the road for much of the afternoon. They're unsure if Kirk was wearing a seatbelt. Both Arnson and the boy were wearing safety devices. And now, your KRCG 13 Weather Authority First Weather. Cool and cloudy conditions are upon us in mid-Missouri tonight, but that is all going to stick around with us until tomorrow. Live look at the Capitol right now. You can't see the cloud cover, but it's coming. 49 degrees, feels like 47 with a little bit of a east-southeasterly breeze upon us. Temperatures right now, upper 40s, falling into the lower 30, into the upper 30s overnight. And you can see we are starting to see very thick cloud cover in mid-Missouri. And those clouds are going to soon include rain. So tonight in your full forecast, I'm going to be going over who will see the rain first, when and where tomorrow morning, and if we will see any more showers coming up in your weekly planner. Lise, thank you. Columbia continues to be a pretty busy city this weekend as several graduation ceremonies are taking place at the University of Missouri. 2,300 students will take part in seven ceremonies Saturday and Sunday, several happening today. Stevens College grads are getting their degrees tonight and 300 students will walk across the podium from Columbia College tomorrow. 41 unwanted guns are now off the streets of Columbia. Columbia Gifts for Guns collected dozens of firearms at their first ever event today. Each gun was exchanged for a $100 gift card or $100 in cash as a way of promoting a safer community. All guns were turned into the Columbia Police Department for disposal immediately after. And a woman and her family are celebrating today as she walks across the stage with her master's in business administration. For Amy Kiso Bledsoe, the diploma from Columbia College means way more than just career advancement. KRCG 13's Megan Sanchez tells Amy's story, who despite facing cancer, is determined to finish what she started. This day has been a long time coming for Amy Kiso Bledsoe. She's a wife and mom of four, and now she has two master's degrees. When I do things, I like to do them all the way, go big or go home. She had to fight to be able to walk across the stage at Columbia College, not just through tough classes and juggling schoolwork and family, but she also had to fight for her life. I found out I once again had cancer, this time stage four. Uh Amy is battling metastatic breast cancer for the second time. There is no known cure for the kinds of mutations she has. She says telling her family her prognosis was excruciating. We planned that we would have a celebration because I'd be done with scans and not have to do them so often. And, uh, you know, they were just like, as soon as I told them, their, their faces just went ghost white and they all just started letting some emotions out, you know. But even with the awful news, she says she knew she had to get to graduation. Honestly, I didn't think I'd make it this far. And so that's another reason it was really important for me to go through graduation and, and to have the honor to speak is just incredible. 
she and one other student are the first graduates to ever speak at a Columbia College commencement ceremony. They've always brought in guest speakers. So Amy shared her words of advice. I want everybody to realize that we can all individually, we can do whatever we want, whatever we set our mind to. Um, just because I have cancer, that's not stopping me. There's no telling how much time Amy has left, but she says as a family, they're embracing every moment, especially this exciting one. And she says she hopes her kids, Braxton, Elena, Garrett, and Zachariah, always remember the good times with their mom. I want them to always be hard workers and do things for others. Because when we do something for others, it helps us to feel better too. More than a degree, more than an accomplishment, this day is about celebrating her story. Reporting in Jefferson City, Megan Sanchez, KRCG 13. And congratulations, Amy, from all of us here at KRCG. Such a powerful story. We're happy to say she received a standing ovation, as you can see on the screen there behind me, at the graduation ceremony today. We'll have Amy's entire commencement speech up later on our website, krcgtv.com. And it's a little more than just getting lost in the neighbor's yard. How did this Georgia cat end up in California? Plus, a trooper found guilty in the death of a Lake Ozark at the Lake of the Ozarks is no longer with the patrol. We'll give you a timeline of the events. And today's high temperature for mid-December was 62 degrees. Coming up, I'll let you know how long we'll see warmer than average conditions in your seven-day forecast. You're watching KRCG 13 live at 10 weekends with Tommy Slater. Weather with Elise Smith and Tony Mullen with sports. ARCG 13, live at 10. ARCG 13, Stephanie Harada reported last month on imported crime here in mid-Missouri and the impact it has on local taxpayers. Monday at 10 in a follow-up report, she tells you how since the story aired, deputies have now added a new way to monitor this growing trend. Monday at 10. When winter weather hits, KRCG 13 is your weather authority. We have the tools to keep you and your family safe before, during, and after the storm. Trust KRCG 13, your weather authority. So you folks took it pretty hard, huh? They love that. Weather at your fingertips at krcgtv.com. Winner of the 2017 Missouri Broadcasters Award for Best Local Website. And now, your KRCG 13 Weather Authority forecast. Temperatures are currently in the upper 40s, and overnight tonight you'll notice the increase in cloud cover and the chance for showers. We could find some showers impacting the southern portion of mid-Missouri very early on tonight, but then most of us, nearly all of us, will see rain tomorrow morning until about noon. So inside the forecast, what you need to know is that you will be impacted by morning showers tomorrow, so just be aware of that as you're starting to plan your Sunday morning. Then we're heading into a warmer week with above average temperatures near 60 degrees yet again and then we are dipping down into Christmas though we can actually decipher from the Midwestern temperatures right now where the cloud cover is and the rain it's in this green area right here where we're seeing warmer than average temperatures and that's because the cloud cover there is really insulating our atmosphere and it's pretty thick cloud cover too this is very warm air mass moving into mid Missouri showers are still in Arkansas right now but they will soon be entering the southern portion of mid Missouri so let's track that here on future class cloud future cast clouds impacting all of us showers start to move in from the southwest and will track to the northeast overnight tonight you can see 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. making their way to central Missouri tomorrow morning then dissipating as they move to the eastern portion so if you are in the western portion of mid Missouri you are most likely to see the most rain tomorrow otherwise clouds will stick around for much of the day tomorrow rain accumulations with these showers about a quarter of an inch but if you have a rain gauge make sure you put that out tonight and then report to us your rain total so if you're in the southwestern portion where the rain is coming from where it is tracking you are most likely to see the most rain and then fewer accumulations to the east however this is not the last chance for precipitation this week but look at these temperatures 
upper 50s again for mid-December. We're getting close to the holiday season and we're seeing 50 degree temperatures. However, here on our precipitation outlook, you can see we might have the chance for a rain snow mix into Thursday and after Thursday. That's associated with the cold front. We will find colder than average temperatures by next Friday back into the 30s and even teens overnight. So colder than average temperatures, above average precipitation possibilities into the Christmas holiday season. And the potential for snow, we are right on the edge at this point. So we'll obviously be updating you to see if we could see any snow near Christmas time. Tonight, 39 degrees, that's your low temperature, only rising up into the upper 40s tomorrow. Remember, very good chance for rain tomorrow morning. So just be aware of that as you start to plan your morning, otherwise a pretty mild afternoon with clouds sticking around throughout the day. Tomorrow is the rain. Then you see sunshine comes back out in the seven day forecast with temperatures into the upper 50s. Nowhere near to record breaking, but very, very warm. Then into Wednesday, you see a little dip in our temperatures, but look at Thursday into Friday, 55 degrees to 36 degrees. So definitely a very strong system moving in Thursday, giving us the potential for some rain and snow, but very cold temperatures after that. Will we ever get used to rain in December? It's a good question. It just mm -hmm. feels very wrong. I, know, I don't you, know. I know. Well, the first day of winter is Thursday. So, of course, now if we say precipitation, you expect snow. Sure. But, I mean, it is Missouri. We could have 50s one week and then 30s the next. We've seen it already, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Elise. Next on KRCG 13, a coast-to-coast -coast cat looks to be reunited with his family. This all after a six-month, yes, I said it's six-month journey across the country. We'll be right back. Sports at your fingertips at krcgtv.com. Winner of the 2017 Missouri Broadcasters Association Award for Best Local Website. A cat that made its way 2,000 miles across the country is now recovering at an animal shelter in California. Now, this cat almost used all of its nine lives with this journey. The cat, Kitty Bitty, was discovered dehydrated and hungry on the back of a Pepsi soda truck in Riverside County, California this week. The crazy part is he disappeared from his home in Georgia. On July 4th, the driver had started the trip just a few miles from the feline's home. His owner was found because Kitty Bitty was still wearing his tags. Hopefully he'll be on his way back home next week, just in time to be with his family for Christmas. And the Highway Patrol confirms the trooper accused in the 2014 death of an Iowa man is no longer with the patrol. The victim's father, Craig Ellingson, received a letter saying the patrol fired Anthony Piercy. He says the letter was sent from Colonel Sandra Karsten, a spokesman with the patrol's general headquarters, confirmed Piercy was no longer employed with the agency. Brandon Ellingson died while in Piercy's custody in 2014. Piercy ultimately pled guilty this fall to negligent operation of a vessel, which is a misdemeanor. We reached out to Piercy's attorney for comment, but we have not heard back as of tonight. And Mizzou basketball goes for a fourth straight win, while the Chiefs look to take control of the AFC West on a Saturday game. Tony's in next with sports. Hi folks, Jerry O'Neill, Continental Siding Supply. We're coming to the end of another great year. The only problem is I've got too much siding in my warehouse. It's better for my company to have low inventory levels by December 31st. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna make you a great deal on in-stock colors. If you want the one and only seamless polymer wall system for a great end of the year price, you should call now. Mediacom's got it. TV, internet, and phone for $16.67 each a month for one year. Enjoy over 125 TV and music channels, plus thousands of free on-demand titles.
speeds up to 60 meg with in-home Wi-Fi, unlimited nationwide calling, and the power to watch your shows on the go with TV everywhere. It's all the essentials with TV, internet, and phone for $16.67 each a month for one year. Save big with Mediacom. Call 800-SIMPLIFY. Hello, I'm Aaron Winter from Three Rivers Electric Cooperative. During the holiday season, we think of our families, the smiles on children's faces, and the real reason we celebrate this holiday. We seldom think of electricity and the comfort and conveniences it provides. Three Rivers Electric strives to provide our members with safe, reliable, and affordable electricity every day. From the Three Rivers Electric family to yours, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and the happiest of New Year's. News at your fingertips at krcgtv.com. Winner of the 2017 Missouri Broadcasters Association Award for Best Local Website. And now your KRCG 13 Sports, driven by Toyota. Let's go places. First place in the AFC West is on the line in Kansas City tonight. The Chiefs and Chargers both coming in the night at 7-6. and six. Only three games left in the regular season. Kansas City won the first matchup with the Chargers earlier this year. That was back in week three. A lot has happened since then. KC up 3-0 in the second. Alex Smith with a bomb down the sideline. Tyreek Hill on the other end. That's a 64-yard touchdown. Chiefs had a 10-0 lead. L.A. would take the lead early in the third quarter. But Smith, another touchdown pass. This one to Kareem Hunt, who set the Chiefs' rookie rushing record tonight. Casey back on top, 17-13. to Defense stepping up here. Phillip Rivers going deep. But Marcus Peters, back from that one-game suspension, comes up with the interception. Returning it deep in Charger territory would set up a field goal. Chiefs adding another field goal in the fourth quarter. They have the lead at the moment, 23-13 in the fourth. KC can basically wrap up the division with a win tonight. They are closing in on the victory. Mizzou football returned to practice today with finals week in the books. Barry Odom's squad worked out this morning inside the Divine Pavilion. Tigers will practice three more times in Columbia before leaving for Houston on the 22nd. Mizzou will play the Texas Longhorns in the Texas Bowl Wednesday night, December 27th. Just three non-conference games left for Mizzou basketball this season. With a victory tonight, the Tigers would already surpass last year's win total. Of course, they only won eight games last season. It was not pretty, if you remember. Conzo Martin and the Tigers entertaining North Florida at Mizzou Arena. Cassius Robertson connects from deep. He had 11 points. One of five Tigers in double figures tonight. John Tay Porter, the offensive board, and the stick back. Six points, 10 rebounds, and five assists. John Tay had a good night. Jordan Barnett driving to the hoop. He had a double-double at 18 points to lead the way. Also 11 rebounds. Tigers took control with a 20 to nothing run in the first half. Kevin Purrier stuffs that one home. Jordan Geist, another solid night. Three of his 11 points. Missouri up 46 to 19 at the half. Reed Nico, 13 minutes off the bench. He was productive. 12 points on six of eight shooting. Couple of dunks in the second half. Missouri is nine and two. They cruise tonight, 85-51 over North Florida. I thought our guys did a good job of uh, in a game like this of maintaining focus outside of uh, uh, a couple minutes there in the second half. Uh, I think the one thing that we needed to do, we didn't, we didn't do a very good job in this game, especially I think in the first 25, 25 plus minutes of pounding the ball inside. I thought we did a better job late in the second half. Tigers back at home Tuesday night. They will host Stephen F. Austin. And then it's off to St. Louis for the Bragging Rights battle next Saturday night against the Fighting Illini of Illinois. The Lincoln Blue Tigers back on the home court today against Emporia State. Remember them? The team that nearly beat Mizzou in Columbia last month. Blue Tigers were down 10 at the half, but they rally in the second. Maurice Mason, the three. Marquise Williams, two of his 17. He led the way. John Burton also with 17. Blue Tigers had a three-point lead in the second half, but Emporia State would get the win, finishing on a 5-0 run, 77-75. LU comes up short. Columbia College wins on the road today. The Cougars are 12-1 after beating Williams Baptist. Westminster and William Woods, both winners in men's hoops. Women's action, Lincoln falls to Emporia State. Columbia wins big, and William Woods loses to Freed Hardman, 68 to 57. We'll have a lot more basketball when we come back. A home game for Helias. 
and a lot of basketball at Jefferson City High. A busy day, seven games at the Capital City Shootout. That and more after the break. It's really coming down out here. You don't want to be out in this, and for good reason. Apparently, even the snow plows have to be dug. Seriously? Your holiday shopping may just have to wait. Nothing can stop you this holiday season when you're in a Jeep SUV. Hurry in for great deals at the Jeep Big Finish event. Now get 0% financing for 75 months or $5,000 total cash allowance on the 2017 Jeep Cherokee. That really is the best bottle in the house. You know what I've thought about all day? What? My bottle. Me too. Hey, that's my bottle. Well, that's okay. I've got my bottle. Do you have it? Well, of course I have my bottle. I've got my right too. Can you believe all the bad news today? But I've got good news. I've got my bottle. And I've got my bottle too. My dad thinks he can fix anything. But at least once a day, we catch him doing that with our modem. Like things would magically be faster if he could just get it high enough. He doesn't get this our sole last century internet. Looks like I'm gonna have to fix this one. Siri, get me extreme internet. Okay, calling extreme. Get unlinked and get a real deal. Extreme delivers the power you need with in-home Wi-Fi speeds up to one gig. We switched to Community Point Bank four years ago, and we're so glad we did. As a full-time and volunteer firefighter, I work long hours, and Community Point Bank's mobile app helps keep me connected. We have four kids, and with their busy schedules, the mobile app is so handy. If I need to transfer funds, check balances, it's so convenient. Switching all of our loans to Community Point Bank has been really easy, from our home loans to our cattle loan. The whole process was awesome, and they're great people to work with. Community Point Bank. Growing together. Hi, John Kane with Eldon Furniture. It's December and the holiday season is in full swing. Shop for the perfect gift for mom or dad. Install new flooring for the family gatherings. Update the bedding in the guest room or spruce up any room with new window treatments. Eldon Furniture has the selection, holiday pricing, and service you're looking for. As we approach the Christmas holiday, Eldon Furniture would like to thank you for your business this past year and wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And welcome back. High school hoops fans enjoyed plenty of basketball at Jefferson City High School today. Seven games total at the Capital City Shootout. It is sponsored by KRCG 13. The host Jefferson City Jays playing in the day's main event. Mark Anderson's 4-0 Jays taking on the rival Battle Spartans who beat Jefferson City twice last year, including in the district championship game. JC jumping on top early. Hudson Nill just three from the corner. About the same spot, Raekwon Davis, nothing but net. Jaybirds were up 17 to 10 after one battle. On the other end, the coach's son, Trey Many, he can shoot, gets that one to fall. J.C., though, would build an 18-point lead at half. Jared Cooper feeds Damani Jarrett for the bucket. The Jays are still unbeaten, 5-0 on the season. They beat the Battle Spartans 75-61. Quick turnaround for Helias after winning at Bolivar last night. The Crusaders on their home floor this afternoon hosting Hazelwood West. They were firing away. Helias is Nick Brandt. Three from the corner. Crusaders up 38-21 at the half. Nice ball movement here. It ends up in the hands of Ben Cooper. And down the net it goes for three more points. Marcus Anthony. Here's another three-pointer. Five Crusaders in double figures today. Elias also 5-0. 76-51 over Hazelwood West. Back to the Capital City shootout. Jamestown and New Bloomfield meeting for the second time this season. They played in the championship game of the Tipton tournament two weeks ago. Jamestown won that one. This was a battle throughout. Kyle Emerson hits three of his game high 17. Cats up two at the break. Break. Eagles stayed right with them. Trenton Barber off the glass. That one rolls down for Jamestown. Eagles had lost until today. New Bloomfields, Bailey Crane, Bucket and the foul. Wildcats win it 53 to 47 over the Eagles. And a Tri-County Conference rivalry. California and Eldon. Pintos and Mustangs lit up the scoreboard at the Fleming Field House this afternoon. Mustangs. Jordan Metz feeds Chase Fitzpatrick for two. Eldon was on top early, but California quickly heats up. Isaac Ash drives in the lane and scores. Pintos are up 46-32 at the half. They weren't done. Jordan Geyser steps back, hits the three. 163 points these teams scored today. 
California, 91-72 over the Mustangs. Rockbridge is now 6-0. The Bruins beat up on Smith Cotton today at the WK shootout in Sedalia. Mexico loses on its home floor to Van Farr. That in the Gary Filbert Classic. Hallsville is 9-0, beating Community. Ethan Thompson hit 1,000 career points today for Hallsville. North Callaway beats Paris. Harrisburg falls to Madison from Illinois at a shootout in St. Louis. On the girls' side of the Capital City shootout, the host Lady Jays taking on Cardinal Ritter. Out of St. Louis, Jefferson City's Greta Harmon. Three from the top of the key. That goes down. Low-scoring game. J.C. up by one and a half, 17-16. Inside go the Lady Jays. Tori LePage. Tough layup goes down. Lady Jays took a four-point lead in the fourth quarter, but Cardinal Ritter, the Lions, would come back and win it by one. Tough loss for J.C. 37-36. 36 the final maybe the best matchup of the day on paper the Herman Lady Bearcats ranked number three in class three facing fourth ranked California Herman in white Brooke Gross nice friendly bounce off the rim there that's a three-pointer Bearcats built a 12-point lead at the half Lady Pinto's fighting to stay in it Elizabeth Lutz feeds Paige Lamb down low for two but Herman too strong Quincy Erickson three from the corner Herman wins at big 72 54 over California. The South Callaway Lady Bulldogs brought a 7-0 record into their matchup with Eldon South Cal. Controlling this one from the start, Ashley Potter connects from deep. Adrian Mann headed to Nichols State, a Division I school. Three of her, 22 points. South Callaway is 8-0. Lady Bulldogs having a fine season. They win it big, 80-34. To 34. Man new Bloomfield and Jamestown. The girls' teams opening the shootout earlier this morning. All new Bloomfield in this one. Haley Bearhorst takes it all the way to the hoop for two. It was a 30 point game at the half. Parker pits it. Drops in three of her 21. Maddie Craighead with 23. All of them in the opening half. New Bloomfield wins this one big by a final of 78 to 30. Eight. Girls basketball scores. Tolton with a great defensive effort in the second half comes back to win at Macon tonight. 50 to 48 battle. Loses in Sedalia to Smith Cotton 45 33. At the Gary Filbert Classic in Mexico, North Callaway falls to Paris. And the Mexico Lady Bulldogs lose to Van Farr. St. Louis Blues opening a home and home with the Winnipeg Jets tonight. They played in St. Louis this evening. They'll head north of the border tomorrow night. Blues on the power play in the first period. Vladimir Tarasenko buries the rebound. 15th goal of the season. Put the Blues ahead 1-0. Vince Dunn adds a power play goal late in the third. Blues have lost two in a row. That streak's over. Kermit Miller's happy somewhere. 2-0. The final score. Blues blank the Jets. And they will play again tomorrow night. A busy day around mid-Missouri, but uh, it was a fun day, long day of basketball. Absolutely, and I'm surprised they don't send you up to Winnipeg, you know? That would be an interesting trip, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is it cold up there? Oh, no. Yes, and they have Ooh. snow. There you go. Really? So they're Perfect not in the hockey 50s. weather, then. then. No, they're <laughs> not. Not in the 50s, no. <laughs> but the good, th good news is we'll see rain tomorrow morning, ending our nearly two-week dry spell. We definitely need some rain, but yes, we'll see temperatures back into the upper 50s again in mid-December. And that sticks around all the way into Thursday. Thursday, we do see another cold front swing through. A pretty strong cold front we could see either a rain or snow mix with that system because temperatures behind that very, very cold, dropping back into the 30s by Friday and Saturday. And colder air will stick around all the way through the holiday season. So much colder air, feeling like winter, especially since Thursday is the first day of winter. But until then, 50 degree temperatures again, guys. So it's staying up there. It is. Wow. All right. Well, that's our show. Tony, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. Elise, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. That was our full report. We will be back on tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Have a good one. Mark Hyman. Worse than media bias is media collusion. Here's what's happening behind the headlines. The Washington Free Beacon learned a reporter privately met with the Democracy Alliance. This closely guarded group is comprised of millionaires and billionaires like George Soros who generously donate to Democratic campaigns and causes. 
The group met last month at an exclusive California resort. There were appearances by Democratic bigwigs such as Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris. The Washington Post reporter Janelle Ross was on the agenda to discuss media strategy. Ross covers politics, including the Trump administration. This is reminiscent of The Journalist. Launched a decade ago, this was a private email listserv used by hundreds of journalists, academics, and liberal activists. They strategized over news coverage. What narratives should they promote? What stories should they squelch? The goal was to create a news environment favorable to then-presidential candidate Barack Obama. It included journalists from the New York Times, Washington Post, Associated Press, Newsweek, and Time. Virtually no prominent media critic reported on the journalist after its existence was revealed, except for a softball story in Politico, which also had membership in the invitation-only group. This brings us back to the Post's Janelle Ross. It appears Ross crossed an ethical boundary by working with the very people and groups she might be expected to report on. To comment, go to BehindTheHeadlines.net. I'm Mark Hyman.